Okay, we back on. So, that's that. Um, any other relationships that I liked? Um, I think that was it. I'm going to leave it like this for now and come back to it because I, I'll definitely be on my eyes for a long time. So I'm just going to go back over with that green and pack it on my lids. And then... There we go. But, yeah, I think that's pretty much that. So, moving on to faith. So, three things that stood out to me as far as, like, the faith aspects of this story goes. Again, do not tug on your eyes. I do this, but don't do it, okay? Um, three things that stuck out to me faith-wise are forgiveness of self, forgiveness of others, um, loving yourself, and then understanding that God comes before your family. Um, and I say that because Priscilla and Aquila both had situations concerning their families where they were torn apart. And um, they had to understand that God was first over their family. As much as you love your family, no matter what, um, you have to do what's best for you in your relationship with the Lord. So if that means you have to be ripped apart from your family, then so be it. It's not a great feeling, of course. Um, but there's always purpose in that. Um, I also learned from this faith aspects wise is that your wounds, how can I say it? Um, this purpose in your pain, which I've always been really like an adamant believer on that purpose in your pains. I don't know why I'm feeling some type of way about this look right now, you guys. Maybe I need to just blend it out a little bit more. It looks crazy now because it's not fully done, so maybe that's what it is. Maybe I need to just finish the look up. And I'm going to go all out. I'm doing lashes too, y'all. I don't really care for lashes, so we're going all out with this look. But um, that's oh, that's not it for the eyes, but I'm going to come back to it once I'm done with my face. But um, let's do liner right now. So I'm taking this um, Wet n Wild Furry Eyeliner that I got. Just an eyeliner. Because we like eyeliners in life. Um, and I'm going to scoop some out on the back of my little teaser. And we're going to pop them on my eyes. But, um... You guys are not going to be able to see this too well just because I'm like close up to this mirror, which you guys can see right there. But, um, I am very strong on understanding that there is purpose in your pain. And you definitely see that with Akila in this story. Um, you know. The things that he went through and had to deal with. I'm just trying to get a different brush. I could have sworn I had another one. And I can't find it at the moment. So what we're going to have to do is go with this one. Which I don't want to use. But whatever. But um. You know. There was purpose in the pain that he had to go through. And it led him to. His wife. And sometimes, concerning family, friends, and loved ones, we have to go through things that we obviously don't want to have to go through. But if we don't go through it, then we can't get to the better that God has for us. I'm trying to wing it out. But I don't have the right brush at the moment, which is kind of making me upset. But, um, uh, I think I just need to go and buy me a new eyeliner pen because this ain't working right now. 
Okay, there we go. Maybe that will be better. Yep. Not the best wing eyeliner I've, I've done, but it's going to have to work for today. And no, I'm not going away. I literally got to pick up my son in like four hours. So, <laughs> I'm just doing this for the video. But, um, yeah, if he didn't go through what he went through, he would have not, he wouldn't have moved to Rome. He wouldn't have met Priscilla. And they would not have been an influential couple in first century Roman Corinth. Um, now, they did end up going to Corinth because of the stupidity of homegirl Antonia, which I ain't going to talk about that. Y'all going to have to read the book to, to understand what I mean by that. But Antonia did something stupid which caused them to be forced to move out of um, Rome and go to Corinth. But... And them having to deal with that, they, um, sorry guys, I don't really like talking when I'm trying to put on eyeliner. Because <laughs> I like my eyeliner a certain way. So. I don't know if anybody else is like that. I don't really like this. My eyeliner is dried out. So I think I need to just trash this and get a new one. Yeah, because this eyeliner is not coming out the way I want it to. So it's time for a new eyeliner. But, um, she did something dumb that caused them to get kicked out, and they had kicked out of Rome, and then they had moved to Corinth, and if they wouldn't have gotten kicked out of Rome, they never would have met Paul. So, that's actually cute now that I'm looking at it with the eyeliner on. Yes, alright. But, um, so yeah, we have that. <sighs> I'm trying to see if there's anything else faith-related that I can think of right now. I mean, just learning to forgive yourself and not judge yourself. Um, because Priscilla was very hard on herself. Um, she felt she was unlovable. She felt like she was cursed by God. Because of the mistakes that she made. And it's very much relatable because I'm sure many of us would felt like that back in the day before we, be, you know, before we got into the level of faith that we're at now. And I'm sure some people still, you know, tend to think that. But you need to understand that God doesn't condemn us. He convicts us through the Holy Spirit. And conviction is meant to bring us closer to him. When you feel like, how can I say this? When you feel like you're, when you, when you feel shame and your past mistakes begin to make you want to pull away from God, that's condemnation. That is not of God. When you understand you made a mistake and you want to pull closer to God you feel a desire to get closer to him and to know more of him that's conviction so I felt like Priscilla had to learn the difference between the two um because she definitely was condemning herself a lot of the times and it's understandable because like I said she was a gentile she was not of the Hebrew people she was definitely a gentile who got baptized and she still had to struggle and learn different things you know, concerning the face. And I'm going to mess up on my eyeliner. Great. Yeah, my eyeliner is definitely messed up. But we're going to keep it going. But, um... Yeah, that's that. I'm just going to take this brush again. This angled brush. Dip it back in. And, um... Again, don't tug on your eyelid, okay? <laughs> As a makeup artist, I'm telling you not to, but I'm doing it only because it helps me. Especially with this dried out. My eyeliner is, like, dried out! seriously dried out and I don't feel like going to get another eyeliner so we're gonna keep working with this one but um that's that I 
Okay. Let me just fix this intersection here. Alrighty, there we go. Not as good as I usually want it to be, like I said, but... This eyeliner is dried out to the T. So we're going to work with it. But I kind of like the way this look is going now. So I'm just going to fix up that right now. With some of that brown. I'm going to go in with this eye color here. It's called Vintage. It's from Lancome as well. I really love Lancome eyeshadows. Like, really, really do. I'm actually going to go in with that same small brush. I can find it here. It is. But, um... Yeah, she had to learn to, um... Forgive herself and not condemn herself. Um, same thing with Akila. They did have a bit of a situation when they moved to Corinth because they stopped communicating with each other only because he started working more and he felt like he wasn't doing everything he needed to as her husband. And she began to feel bad because she kept getting her cycle and she wanted to have children. Um, so she felt like because he wasn't speaking to her that he was upset she couldn't have children. And then he felt like because she wasn't speaking to him that um, it was because he failed her as a husband. And it wasn't the case for neither one of them. It was a lot of miscommunication, but thankfully they had Paul speak to each of them separately to make them realize the other felt a certain way which i thought was great um okay going back into corduroy on my brush because i like that green so i want to make it pop more i don't want to misplace that green but i also want that brown i'm just taking that on top That's it, that's it for now. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much that. Going back into that vintage color. Because it's my transition color. And I'm just blending everything now. But yeah, so scripture wise, he definitely used a lot of good scriptures from um, a lot of different prophets. A lot of Isaiah for sure. Um, which I enjoyed and I can't really show you guys per se because I don't have a physical copy I did read the arc of it. So when I do get a physical copy of the book, I will be do um, I'll do a review With the physical book in my hand. I don't have a physical copy So it's kind of hard to show you guys, but I can tell you for a fact she did use a lot of um, Good scriptures that were really useful and um, They just flowed with the story I think that's it for now yeah okay so we have that for the eyes i'm liking it i feel like it's uneven but maybe it's because one i'm blind and can't see and two it's been a minute since i have makeup on my face but i really like that eye look oh my god that is so pretty all right so lashes i'm taking these valero lashes that stephanie has sent me and we're gonna pop them on we're gonna, we gonna wear them we're gonna pop them on hopefully i don't have to cut them um probably will let's see yeah, so, favorite quotes. Alright, so for this, I have to move that out the way and open up the actual book. Let me see if I have to cut these. Um, I'm just putting them on to see if I need to cut them, because I normally do have to cut lashes, so. But I'm going to share with you guys some of my favorite quotes. Um, I'm almost done. Once I do my eyes, it doesn't take that long for me to do my face. Um, no, I don't have to do that. So, where's my glue? Oh, okay. So I'm taking this Duo Clear White glue. I normally use black glue on my clients. Um, I just had this one, so I'm just gonna use it on myself. Like I said, I don't really do lashes like that, so it don't really bother me. But um, all right. So let me pull up some of my favorite quotes from the book. That was real extra. I know. And let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I'm trying to get this glue out.
Sorry, my glue is like taking forever to come out. Come on. There we go. Got it out. Now I just want to. Okay, so glue on the first one. And let's pop out the second one. But, um, okay, so the first quote is going to be from, I think, who is this? This said this, Priscilla. Um, time, had time had become the enemy that she could not conquer. And um, sometimes I feel like that's how we feel with time because time, we, we don't really have control over time. So sometimes we feel like we can't conquer time. But if you really think about it, um, the only person that can conquer time is God himself. He is outside of time, you know. He is the God of everything. He created time, like literally he created night and day, you know. So we have no control over time. So we don't need to feel like we can we can conquer it or we can't conquer it because in all actuality we can't. Um, it's all God. God has to be the one to do it. Sorry guys, I'm trying to get my glue out again. Having a hard time. Here we go. I'm just going to have to pop a hole because I think the glue is kind of like stuck. Okay, glue on the second one. So I put glue on my lashes. Normally I will wind the lashes around my fingers to curl them up a little bit more. Um, professional tip, I normally take lashes before I put glue, wrap them on my fingers so that they're curled up, and then I put the glue on, let it get tacky, and then stick it on. But, um... That's one of my favorite quotes so far. I have a lot, so I'm not going to get too deep into this. Oh, this one here. They was talking to... Who was talking? Was it Rufus? I don't know who... Yeah, Rufus. Of course, because Rufus always got to give them good quotes. Rufus reminds me of the prophet Nehemiah from the Harvest of Ruby's Duology, with like how he was spitting out knowledge. But he said, You may have lost the favor of your father, but your heavenly father delights in you. It takes courage to stand your ground, strength to lose everything, and still hold to the truth. I was just like, my God. Because um, for me, I didn't lose my father. Like My, my earthly father is still around. Um, He's still on this earth but we don't talk like like we should um there were some things that transpired in my family when i graduated high school that kind of took a long time for me to get over the hurdle and there are still things that hurt but um i need to understand i had to learn that you know even though my earthly father may have done things my heavenly father won't even though my earthly father may not love me the way I want to be loved, um, my heavenly father loves me the way I need to be loved, if that makes sense. So we have that. Um, what else? Ah, so there's a thing that there's a part where Priscilla was reminiscing on how she started getting to the synagogues. And she said this was the sound that had first drawn her to the synagogue over a year ago. And the reason why I highlighted that as a, an, a memorable quote for me is because within my ministry, my ministry has a sound. Um, and it is weird for me to say it out loud, like the way I'm saying it now. Hopefully you guys understand it. But um, let me actually grab one of my lashes while I'm talking about this. I don't know if it's tacky enough. No, not yet, but I'm going to blow on it and make it so. But there is something about my church, and it's been said many, many of times when we have visitors or people who will walk past our ministry. We have a sound, and there's something about the sound um, of a ministry, and not just musically the sound, but there's a sound that you hear on a spiritual realm, spiritual level, that attracts other spirits spirits meaning the spirits within us our spirits the holy spirit is what i mean not demonic spirit type stuff like the holy spirit within us is what i'm talking about but um there's a sound that attracts other holy other beings that have the holy spirit within them to the church and it, it's hard for me to verbally say it out loud but um i just i marked it because i thought it was cool um it says priscilla phil an attraction for this guy who let tender spot for a world full of broken people. Nope, not that one. Oh, here it is. There's um, a part that talks about Priscilla. She says the guy she had come to see as a wellspring of goodness. And um, I marked it as a memorable quote because a lot of the times we don't remember that God is a good God. 
um, we might be going through things, we might be suffering with things. Like for me, I'm dealing with something that I literally have been dealing with for years and um, it's the most annoying thing because I know the promise that God gave me. I know what he revealed to me and you know for so many years i've seen it decline and it's just like all right lord what's going on like i know you're a good god but you told me this what what's going on and i have to remember that he is a god of goodness he's a faithful father he is a true father um he is a wellspring of love a wellspring of love i said that right twice a wellspring of love a wellspring of goodness a wellspring of um just riches and abundance and for me i need to understand that Though I'm going through what I'm going through right now, it's obviously for better. We always go through pain and suffering for our better in the end. So I have to look at it that way. But it is a struggle going through what I'm going through because I know the promise that has been told to me plenty of times from my leaders and other ministry leaders and then from God himself, which was revealed to me. And it's just like to not see it happen and to feel the way I feel, it's a struggle. Um, so that's that. Let me put this lash on real quick. Okay, guys, so what I did was cut off the ends so I can get the other one. So I cut off the ends of the um, lashes to make it work. Got them on. I don't know if you guys can tell, but they're definitely on. I can feel them on. I just, I don't do lashes that much, but um, yeah. I'm just going to, I'm probably going to curl them up. Uh oh. So yeah, um, they're still semi-drying. But I put on some mascara. So I use the Jordana Best Lash Extreme Volumizing Mascara. My favorite drugstore mascara. And then I did on the lower lashes the Voluminous uh, Millions Lashes from L'Oreal. So that's that. So moving on, let me put these scissors to the side. Tweezers to the side. Going back to the under eye area, I'm going to go in with that corduroy again and smudge it under let me get a smaller brush because that one ain't gonna work that not gonna work so we're gonna use a small pencil brush um, and just smudge it underneath the entire lash line I'm going to go in with that brown and smudge that under there as well. I don't want it too brown. I don't want it too green. Because I am going to put um, a nude on my waterline to open up that area. So... Okay, going in with that brown now on top. It's okay if it's messy because I'm going to be putting concealer under my eyes anyway. Alright, going in with this nude eyeliner. It's from Shiseido. Um, it's a makeup eye corrector pencil. It's just a nude color, literally nude. And I'm just going to put that on my waterline. And instantly it's going to open up my eyes a bit. If you guys can see, it makes this eye look a little bit bigger. Um, if you put a black or brown, it closes out the eye. If you put a um, neutral color, a nude or a light brown, it kind of opens up the eye a bit. So that's what I want to do. If you guys hear rain, it's not raining outside. It's literally just the um, ambiance I have on my TV right now. It was snowing this morning. Well, it's still morning. Well, no, it's afternoon now, but it was snowing earlier. But um, it's been so long since I wore lashes, so this is literally irritating me. When I say it's been so long since I put on makeup, guys, it really has. And um, you can tell because this thing is irritating. And 
and it's not even the actual lash strip it's the tip of the lash bothering my eye which is crazy but i like this look so far so we're done with the eyes if i'm not mistaken so let's move on to the face um and give you guys some more of my thoughts so foundation wise i'm gonna go with um my revlon nearly naked foundation i don't use high-end foundation on myself never will never do um i got a sample i think of the makeup forever foundation which i did like but um i'm more of a revlon color cup not cover girl what's the other foundation revlon and maybelline foundation kind of girl So, those are the foundations I prefer. I'm not even sure if this color works still with me because I haven't worn foundation, like I said, in a minute. So, looks like it does. That's fine. But I'm just going to buff this all over my face. And again, like I said, my policy is little makeup. You don't need a lot. I don't believe in caking your face in makeup. I really don't. And I think that's why I like the Nearly Naked. Um, because it's not super heavy. I know it looks like it doesn't match. Don't worry. <laughs> it will work out in the end. I'm blending it to my neck. I'm going to have a lot of makeup to take off my face today. <laughs> but I definitely wanted to do this because I, I just had to talk about the book. Um, is there anything else that I want to talk about concerning this book? Mm. I can't think of anything right now off the top of my head, honestly. I just know I enjoyed it. I just wish the writing was... I don't know, like I said, the writing was different for me. Not what I'm used to. I'm just taking this, um concealer brush here and going where my brows are the writing style kind of just threw me off just a bit and I don't know if that was just me and my expectations or if it really was like that but yes she is looking cute today but overall I did enjoy the story and I loved Priscilla and Aquila. Um, I can't think of anything else to talk about because I don't want to spoil too much of the book for you guys. Once my physical copy comes, I will be rereading it, like I said, and doing an actual sit-down video review of it. But I think this is also a fun way for me to get back into doing makeup because as a makeup artist that doesn't wear makeup, that's, that's stupid, um, at least in my opinion. <laughs> And I actually do miss playing in makeup. It's just I haven't done it in so long. So I figured this would be a fun way to co incorporate my love of beauty on my channel. Yes. Um... All right. I have a little bit more so I'm just gonna take it and dab it on my cheek area I got a pimple on my face dab and buff there we go but if you guys have read it um let me know your thoughts because I'm curious to know like did you think her writing style was the same was it different personally i felt it was different um but it also could be like i said that i was expecting i had high expectations and i was like super stoked for her writing this book so that definitely could be it all right foundation is on on to the under eye concealer i'm taking this color here on warm honeys from the la girl pro conceal concealer and we're going to I don't want nothing too over the top, so that's why I'm going with this color here. Under the eyes, um, chin, cupid's bow. I'm trying to see if I want it anywhere else, but I probably don't. So we're just going to work with that for now. Dab. Okay. 
don't worry because I know it's like white, white, but I'm going to blend that out and m make it work. I just wanted to get this here. And like I said, I already put that under eye eyeshadow, so I'm just cleaning everything up with this concealer. Okay. I'm still not done because I need to put it in a corner highlight, but going back with the brush I use my foundation on, I'm just going to pat so that it blends and it's not too noticeable. There you go. And then while that's going... I'm going to use where it is the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder that my sis sent. I'm going to take a flat foundation brush, like a regular normal foundation brush, and use that to um as people say bake. <laughs> I normally don't bake, honestly, but why not go all out for this right now? And I try to bake um, bake or set my under eye concealer before it settles into the fine lines. Because I do have fine lines under my eyes. Okay. And we are going to just dab that... looking up again we're gonna bake as people call it I'm gonna look up and pat that under the eye area I don't want it to be too noticeable so Sorry guys, I don't know why I'm doing that while I'm looking camera. That's dumb. Um, I need a brush to set over my face with. So I'm taking this and I'm taking my favorite powder, which is the Maybelline Fit Me um, powder in Toffee 330. And I'm going to use that on the rest of my face because um, it's a lightweight powder and I really like it. So... That's what I'm using on my face. I really like this look now that I'm looking at it, guys. There's something wrong with this lash. Ugh. Going under the eye area, I'm just sweeping underneath to get the excess off. Mm -hmm. Set this up here. Alrighty, got that done. So we're going to move on to the cheeks. We're going to move on to the cheeks now. Put that over there and that there and that there. And to bring that coral in, I'm going to... First, let's um, not do that first. Let's contour. I'm taking this. This is the uh, Black Radiance True Complexion Contour Palette Light to Medium. Um, I think I can get away with this one, but if not, I'm going to use the medium to dark, but I think I can. I'm going to take the contour shade out of this palette. Oh my gosh, get off. Okay. Taking this contour shade right here. 
Hopefully it works. Um, if it doesn't, I don't know what to do. But um, it should work. If not, It's okay, but I'm still going to go with the other one as well from the other palette. That's alright, but I'm going to go with the medium to dark take that color right there a little dark I know but um, there we go it looks dark don't worry I'm gonna blend it out <laughs> okay going back with my brush that I put the powder on with we're gonna blend it out Just moving it out the way. Because I want it to be prominent, but not like in your face. And like I said, I hate blending. Everything has to be blended, and I can't stand blending because <laughs> it takes forever to blend. Okay. So I'm chiseled without being over the top on to blush. I'm taking this color here because it just goes. Um, it's called Mandarin Sky. Can't really see it, but I put the name on the front. It's Shimmer Mandarin Sky, and that's what it looks like. It's a coral blush. Love it. Such a pretty color. The same brush I use, and this brush um, is an e.l.f. brush. That same brush. I'm going to put that on my cheeks. And it does have a little bit of a golden shimmer, which I like. Definitely a coral with gold shimmer, which I really wanted to just add more shimmer because that's what we do. Highlight. I'm taking in this color here. It's not that color. This came off of another palette. <laughs> Wrong. But it's called Glow. It's from Milani. I'm not sure if they even make these anymore, but it's their big bronzers. I love using these as highlighters. This is normally my go-to highlighter because it's really subtle. And I'm just going to highlight my cheekbones. Like I said, it's a really subtle highlighter. It's not super over-the-top and in-your-face highlight. And then over the top of that, we're going to get some Becca going. And again, from my sis, um, this is the Becca Light Chaser Highlighter for Eyes and Face in Champagne Dream. And um, this is actually my first time using this product. So let's just go with it. Oh, yes. Yes, darling. Woo. That glow is insane. Oh, I just picked up way too much. Oh, yes. She is shimmering. Oh, y'all can't tell me nothing with the shimmer on my face. Yes, darling. Y'all pay me no mind. Like I said, it's been a minute. Um, And I'm just going to blend everything again just because that's what I do. Um, And before I close this, let me get... No, not that brush. I'm going to take another brush, this brush here, and I'm going to go in with another color. I'm actually going to take that grateful color and bring it to the tear duct area. And then I'm going to take Oh Heavens as well. 
Oh yeah, that's cute. So basically I took again that Grateful and then this Oh Heavens and mixed them together for an inner tear duct color. I always like a bright tear duct. That with a pretty waterline really helps to open up the eyes. Mm hmm yes there we go yes darling ending this video we're going to do my lips i haven't drunk my tea the whole video you guys you know that and now it's extremely cold but that's okay on my lips i'm taking this l'oreal color rich lip liner called nudes for life it's just a nude color um just a brown and I'm lining my lips. And I already had time for that um, Vaseline to set into my lips. So there we go on my lips. The lip color I'm going with is called Coral Berry. Um, it's from Revlon, of course, because we are... Revlon Lovers. That's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. It's coral, of course. Um, and then I'm taking this lip gloss from Revlon as well. It's called Sunset Peach, and I'm going to throw it right on top. Actually, there you go. All right. And there we have it, you guys. Um, the look. So let me take my hair down so you guys can see and fix it a bit. Oh. But yeah, oh gosh. Here we go with this hair, of course. But yeah, um, here's the look. I really, really like the way it came out. It's really, really pretty. Um, this might be too much. You can definitely pair it with a neutral lip, obviously. But I wanted to play all up with the cover colors. So again, here is the cover to the book. I really like it. It's really cute, really, really subtle. I definitely will wear this out on a date night. I will wear this to church for sure. Um, the lips are not too bold. Like I said, if you want to, you can just pair it with a nude lipstick. But I am loving this look a lot more than I thought I would. Um, and like I said, this was definitely an on-the-fly type of look. It was not something that I had in my mind already. But, um, yeah, my camera is getting ready to die and the, the storage space is about to run out. So I'm going to insert photos of the look towards the end, at the end of this. And um, if you guys enjoyed this, let me know. Um, comment down below if there's any other book covers that you guys would love me to recreate. Let me know because I'm always looking for new books to read and new book covers to do. But thank you guys for rating, commenting, and subscribing. Like this video. Subscribe if you are not subscribed. And I'll see you guys in the next video.